Okay everyone, let's continue on to section 7, IPsec VPN Tunnels and Global Protect. PanOS VPN Tunneling Options. Okay everyone, in section 7 we're gonna look at Palo Alto's VPN Tunneling Options. And the options are very straightforward, IPsec Tunneling. We want to connect remote offices, we want to connect to an external entity or a partner. You decide to partner with company B, your company A. Not necessarily you want to have an MPLS or a dedicated lease line to establish a private LAN or a private network between the two entities. You can do a cost-effective interconnect, and it's still private, over the internet by creating an IPsec tunnel. And in this type of connection, you have a service that will be encrypting your traffic in the Palo Alto, and this is the IPsec service that runs on the particular tunnel. So you have two type of faces that will be in charge of adding that encryption and, and authentication process so we know that the traffic is completely secure end to end. We're gonna discuss that on this section and we're gonna also take a look at Global Protect VPN. And every firewall, or I would say every major or known network firewall vendor will have their flavor of remote access VPN. Okay, I have an appliance, I have remote users, or you or company, it's allowing telecommute, which will require users working from home, working from anywhere in the world to connect to your on-prem environment yeah because you either have an on-prem server you have some sort of applications that are running on-prem on your data center and those applications are not open to the outside world because they're not web applications they're actually requires an end-to-end -end, uh, communication and you need to have that type of connectivity secure over the internet and the way we do it in Palo Alto is with Global Protect we have two options in Global Protect we have the portal and we have the gateway those two items or options in Global Protect are necessary to establish and enable Global Protect for our remote users and we're gonna take a look in upcoming sections so if you you can see on this slide I have two type of connectivity or tunneling connectivities that we can establish in our Palo Alto firewall. In the left side, if you can see my mouse over here, I am hovering over what it seems to be a branch office. So I just put a small building here and we have a Palo Alto, we have a dedicated WAN connection and we have our on-prem environment or I label this side of the network as our corp data center. This office, we have some remote users because they're part of the organization, but they're not actually in the same regional area. So in this case, we need to provide them some remote connectivity, but not necessarily we need to have them on demand connectivity because we might need to have an always on connectivity. Good example, we have a read only domain controller in this branch office, and we need to have replication between the two domain controllers in our Active Directory environment. This is basically how do you allow users to authenticate into the environment. This is LDAP. So you have to create some sort of replication so the main data center can replicate those objects between the branch office and so on. So we cannot establish an on-demand tunnel or a remote access VPN for this type of scenario because we need to have an always-on connectivity. This is one example. Another example is having you, know, you peer with a partner or you are providing services or your partner company is providing services to you and you need to have an always on connectivity. So you need to build a site to site tunnel and you configure your peers and we're going to discuss what is peers and how to configure them in the Palo Alto. So basically what you need to do is have uh, the two peers and you'll establish that tunnel and we'll encrypt that traffic. Okay, so our other option in VPN tunneling is our remote access VPN. In this case, you have users, and you can see the picture here. Uh, we have this lady that we don't know where actually she's working, but she seems to be working, and uh, she needs to establish connectivity to the corporate data center where we have hosted all of our application servers, and we need to make sure that her connection over the internet is completely encrypted and it's secure. So we will not have some sort of man in the middle or we're not going to have someone sniffing our traffic and seeing what is actually happening in the pipe or in this particular tunnel. So this requires the end user to have a client and a remote access client. In this case, the Palo Alto uses Global Protect. And Global Protect is not just a simple remote access client. It does much more than that. It can profile your machine. It can find all the attributes of your machine and send that to your central Palo Alto or in this case, 
to the Global Protect Gateway where that information will be sent into the Palo Alto and we can identify the machine and we know about the OS that is running. We can know what updates does that machine have. We can know if the machine is running with a up-to-date antivirus. And we can put even policies to say, well, if you're not running with, with no antivirus or you're not updating your machine on a regular basis, meaning you don't have, a, in this case, if it's Windows, you don't have Windows updates enabled then we can deny that traffic and we can say well until you get your updates up to date we're not going to give you access and that can be also done with the power of global protect client so the global protect client can also serve as an end user agent that will send the information from their local machine over the WAN to the on-prem Palo Altos in this case to our on-prem firewalls and um, and we have two options in global protect we have the portal and the gateway the portal this is where we point our users to download the client because we host the copy of Global Protect Client and the Palo Alto itself. So we will have a web access gateway or basically a website that is basically on the Palo Alto. And in that website, once the user enters their credentials and they're authenticated, they're going to be able to download the client, the Global Protect Client. And we're going to have links to download that executable where they're going to be able to install on their machines and then establish connectivity. Then we have the gateway. The gateway is where we actually establish the connectivity to. So once we have the client, we point ourselves to the public IP of the outside facing interface in the Palo Alto where we have our global protect enabled. So the remote users will point to either a DNS name or FQDN in this case if you have a, a public DNS provider you can have the Palo Alto's interface IP or you can have also an assigned public IP as your global protect gateway and clients will basically point there and they will be able to establish a connection once they have authenticated access and after that this is treated like any other zone so you can put policies to the global protect zone or the VPN zone and then once you have that you will have access to the resources that you're allowed to okay so this section is to discuss those two connectivity options so if we want to leverage VPN tunnels in the Palo Alto we will be able to do by implementing IPsec land to land or site to sites and also enable remote access VPN with global protect Okay, everyone, in our next video, we're going to discuss IPsec site-to-site -site VPNs in tunnel mode. Thank you for watching.